This is a set of instructions for how to speak with the devil. Which those of you with any sort of brains at all might note is a potentially moronic proposition on the face of it. One likely to accumulate in any number of thoroughly unpleasant fates. Honestly, it would probably be a smarter idea to publish your credit card number on Facebook or <laughs> take up a career in crocodile wrestling. But then again, that isn't going to stop you, is it? <laughs> no, no, not if you're sincerely interested, at least. Technically, if you do everything just right, there's a fair chance that you might walk away scot-free. And you know what? That seems to be enough reason for some people to decide that it's a good idea. Especially if you're the fate-tempting, thrill-seeking, scare-junkie type. Or the desperate type. Which brings me to a point of clarification I ought to make. This isn't some sort of manual for making any kind of fastened bargain. You know, the one where you sell your soul for some type of deal. Though, if you happen to bring it up in conversation, he certainly wouldn't be one to refuse. Following through with such a foolhardily bargain, however, would necessitate removing some of the protections which you will put in place for your conversation. And... <sighs> Please, dear God, I, I don't think I need to spell it out for you why that would be a bad idea. If you're honestly mathematically impaired enough to want to take up a trade of something that will last the infinite number of years for something that might last 90 tops, there are plenty of other rituals out there for you to follow. This one, if performed correctly, should only allow the two of you to talk. This perhaps begs the question of why exactly you would want to speak with the devil in the first place. Maybe some of you like the idea of making small talk a extremely dangerous occult entity. But for the sake of the human race, I hope not all of you are quite that stupid. Short answer is, he knows things. Things you may have some sort of deep, vested interest in finding out. I mean, he's not omniscient or anything, but as much as he likes to pretend otherwise, he's not God. But he's definitely got a supernatural advantage over any kind of knowledge any human would be able to obtain. For example, he probably wouldn't be able to predict when the next world war will happen, or tell you to cure for cancer, but he could very well be able to predict the um, winning numbers for tomorrow's $500 million Powerball drawing? Or tell you what deadly, undiagnosed condition that might be affecting one of your loved ones. Of course, the Prince of Darkness doesn't just go around giving out winning lottery numbers to anybody who asks, and trusting any sort of information obtained from a being commonly described as the father of all lies is liable to land you in a worse situation than you were when you first started. However, if you're really dead set on finding something out, and you've exhausted all other options, there is a way for you to get some accurate information out of the guy. You see, like so many more of the urban villains in popular culture, the devil has a bit of a penchant for games and gambling. Of course, the reason why he likes him so much is because he almost always wins. <laughs> Unless you happen to be a fiddler named Johnny, or represented by Daniel Webster, you're probably going to get your ass handed to you. But, if you're determined enough to want to face the risk and the long odds, there's a certain game that you two could play, and you can try to win the information you need. First things first though, we're going to start off with a description of the summoning process, then we'll get into the rules of the game, some tips on how to play, and finally, of course, the inevitable la latency of arcane shit that could go horribly wrong. <sighs> In order to contact your conversational partner, you'll need to go to a church at midnight. 
It doesn't matter what kind of church, large, small, old, new, liberal or conservative, just as long as you're sure it will be empty. The last thing you would want is for some preacher to walk in on you while you're in the middle of this, for the sake of the preacher's well-being as much as your own. The process will work best if you try it on a new moon, or full moon, or Friday the 13th, or even maybe Halloween. The actual day is less important as the psychological effect it has on you, as long as you don't try it on Christmas Eve or something stupid like that, you should be fine. The time is important though. You don't have to start or end your ritual at exactly 12 a.m. Greenwich atomic time or anything, but as a general rule of thumb, you ought to show up a little bit before midnight and have everything set up by no later than 15 after. Show up a lot before midnight if you have no idea how you're going to get in. Shockingly enough, most houses of God do tend to lock their doors at night. At least, if no one's there to watch over them. And remember, we want empty. Got it? Got it? Ugh. There are, of course, certain things that you need to bring and certain things that you can't bring. For this ritual, you'll need a full can of salt. You won't need to use all of it, but it's always better to have more than you, well, need than less. Seven candles, red or white being preferable. Something to light the candles with. You'd be shocked how often people forget this. Occult ritual or not, they're not gonna magically light themselves. A length of red string, rope, yarn, or thread. A full length floor or wall mirror. Ideally, you want one that's already well present in the church. They're a bit unwieldy lugging around with you during a break-in. However, if there really aren't any there, you'll have to bring your own. You also might find it useful to bring some markers, pencils, papers, flashlights, and any sort of tool that might be necessary to secure your entrance into the church. You'll not and I repeat, you will not be permitted to bring any electronic or timekeeping devices. This includes all cell phones, smartphones, tablets, e-readers, MP3 players, PDAs, calculators, wristwatches, pocket watches, kitchen timers, hourglasses, etc, etc, etc. Seriously, it's worse than the SETs. If you're one of those people who has to have your smartphone practically wired into their brain, don't worry, you can bring those things with you to the church as long as you leave them outside of the room in which you'll be doing the ritual. If you brought a flashlight, <laughs> helpful for finding your way around without attracting unwanted attention, then leave that outside too. Also, don't bring any sort of religious paraphernalia to protect you, especially if it pertains to the Ar well, Abrahamic religions. And yes... If those gothic black cross earrings you're wearing is hanging right side up, they count. If you have any sort of holy symbols like that with you, the devil will simply refuse to show up. Don't worry, you're not going in totally unprotected. In fact, most of the supplies that are with you are not there for any sort of devil summoning ritual, but rather for your own protection. Old superstition and folk magic remedies to guard oneself from evil. From what I know of it, the effects are mostly based on the power of belief, so there are probably numerous other objects, artifacts, and procedures that would work just as well. If you, well, like to risk being left helpless at the mercy of the devil in order to test that theory, feel free to experiment. However, for anyone without a psychotic death wish, I'd recommend sticking to the ritual as follows. Once you're sure you have all the right supplies with you, make your way to the church and find some place to set up. It can be anywhere, the main sanctuary, where services are held, to the Sunday school classroom, to the walk-in supply closet. As long as you have a sufficient amount of open floor space and, well, are certain not to be disturbed, set up your mirror first. This is where the devil will appear when you summon him. As such, you mustn't complete the summoning until you've laid down the certain wards around it. First, surround the mirror with a unbroken circle of salt. If the mirror is hanging on the wall or the door, 
lay down a semicircle instead, making sure that the salt touches both ends of the wall. Then, wrap your red string around the mirror several times. The color red especially, especially red string, is symbolic of protection in the folklore of many cultures and religion. This is why red candles are also a good idea. However, white also represents purity, which is another well, way of protecting yourself. In speaking of candles, set them up and around outside your circle, or semicircle of salt. Space them out at relatively even intervals. No, you do not have to get out the measuring tape and make it exactly perfect, but do at least try to make it look as though it was set up by someone who is old enough to be trusted with matches. Light the candles in a clockwise-like fashion. Be careful not to disturb the salt. If you break the circle, you have to start all over again. Once all the candles are lit and burning strongly, your protective wards are complete, and you are now ready to proceed with the actual summoning. To do so, you must first get the devil's attention by demonstrating your resolve by performing some sort of sacrilegious act in the holy space. Turning a crucifix upside down is a fairly conventional method, but it's not entirely the only option. For example, I once knew a kid who fulfilled this requirement by scribbling a noxious graffiti all over the painting of Jesus, hanging in his Sunday school classroom. The nice thing about turning a cross upside down is, once you're finished with your encounter, assuming you survived in one piece, you can just flip it right side up again, and no one's the wiser sidestepping the relatively minor but still irritating risk of having your Sunday school turn into a reenactment of the Spanish Inquisition for the next month and a half. After you've finished doing whatever offensive thing you decide on, shut all the doors in the room, turn off all the lights so that the space is only lit by the candles. Face the mirror and stare deeply into it, concentrating on your desired outcome. There are no incantations, no arcane strings of Latin you must recite. Just look into the mirror and wish as hard as you can for the devil to appear there. After a few moments of this, when you feel ready, close your eyes and count to ten. Then open them. If done correctly, you'll no longer see your own reflection, but instead, you'll be looking at the devil, or at least, looking at the way the devil has chosen to appear to you. Chances are he won't look like your conventional red horn demon with goat legs and a pitchfork, nor any sort of terrible apparition. No point in scaring you off now. Better to lure you in, make you feel safe. To that end, he generally takes on the appearance of a fairly average, nondescript human being. If anything, he's prone to vanity and will lean towards the more attractive end of the spectrum. The only really th frightening thing about him will be his eyes. No matter how hard he tries, he can't hide that lovely, sinister gleam smoldering within them. The malevolent amusement and hunger like the eyes of a spider contemplating a fly struggling in his web, they are supremely confident, those eyes. Confident and without pity. Don't look into them too deeply, or you'll begin to feel helpless and paralyzed with dread, losing your hope and your will to fight. Since you'll probably be just standing there and staring at him in shock for a few moments, having on some level expected your ritual to fail, he'll initiate by, well, conversation by asking you what you desire of him. If you can gather your wits enough to string together a coherent sentence, you should respond with something like, I wish to challenge you in a game of question and response. Even if you don't get the words exactly right, he'll know what you mean and he'll accept your request with a wide, predatory grin of anticipation. He's been playing this game for a very long time, you see, and he's very good at it, while most humans, on the other hand, are very bad at it. This gives him the chance to, at the very least, thoroughly mess with your mind. At the most, well, 
we'll save that for the latency of shit that can go wrong. You'll have to play it very smart to avoid justifying his expectations. The general rules to the game are very simple, with a few caveats that make the things more complicated. He'll begin by asking you a question. He always initiates the game. It can be anything from a piece of obscure trivia, to a riddle, to maybe a extremely personal inquiry. Don't worry though, you won't immediately be plunged into hell if you get the wrong answer or anything like that. As a matter of fact, he won't even tell you whether you got the answer right or wrong. After you've answered his question, you get to ask him one in return. Now, here's where the consequences of your response come in. If you answered the last question correctly, he will respond to your question honestly and accurately as he is able. However, if you answered it incorrectly, he is free to lie to you as he sees fit. Perhaps, if you ask him something that you're better off not knowing, he'll tell you the truth about it anyway. <laughs> but that's not likely. More likely, he'll just feed you the most insidious and damaging lie he can come up with. Either way, after he responded, he'll ask you another question, and the process will repeat over and over again until you decide to call it quits. Now. You may be sitting there, thinking about, you know, how it sounds fairly easy to get the information that you need. All you have to do is wait for a question that you can answer correctly, and then take the opportunity to ask him what you really want to know, ignoring everything else he had said. Well, it's not quite that simple. The devil will never give you an easy question, one that you can be completely sure the answer to. He may instead give you questions that you have some vague knowledge of, that you maybe know the answer to, but you're not really confident, thus forcing you to endlessly question yourself, uh, well, obsessing over whether or not you can trust the information he gives you next. Perhaps you'll think that it was a lie, wish it was a lie, but internally, you're consumed by doubt, unable to fully convince yourself that you are wrong. Or perhaps, you'll have to make a huge choice based on the information he gives you, and be tormented by the fear and indecisiveness as you realize that that's your fate, and perhaps the fate of others as well. And this all rests entirely upon whether or not you are able to correctly recall some arcane piece of trivia that you can't even remember now. You'll never be able to remember the exact question the devil asks you, by the way. That would make it too easy for you to go back and check on your responses. Or maybe. Instead of testing your knowledge, he'll ask you something personal, something that you even lie to yourself about. You'll answer back to him thinking you've gotten the question correct, like, No, I don't resent my sister. Or, of course I would turn the money into the police. But. He'll know better. He'll know better than you do. He'll know that you're lying. And in return, he'll lie to your face. <laughs> and you'll believe him. You'll believe him until you can no longer deceive yourself. And by then, <laughs> it will be too late. Or maybe. Maybe he won't even give you the chance to get an accurate response at all. Maybe he'll just give you an endless string of impossible questions, making you more frustrated and disheartened as you realize you'll never be able to force him to tell you the truth. Questions like, what is the exact height of Mount Everest in centimeters in the year 1666? Or, what is the airspeed velocity of a unladen swallow? Although, knowing his sense of humor, if you ever ask the latter, he might consider African or European as correct responses. There are a couple of ways to short-circuit this particular strategy. However, additional rules and courses of action that make the game more interesting and prevent you from being stonewalled completely. Although, in all honesty, he probably wants you to try one of those options anyway. 
The first option is to ask him a riddle instead of a question. If you somehow manage to stump him, and he answers the riddle wrongly or gives up, he's obliged to give you a truthful response to your next question. If he answers the riddle correctly, once again, don't worry. He won't pounce on you like a sphinx or drag you into hell or something. But what will happen is that he gets a pass, allowing him to lie in response to one question that he would otherwise be obligated to answer truthfully. Honestly, if he gets a pass, you might as well just give up, quit the game right there, as it's nearly impossible to determine when he's telling the truth under the best of conditions. Adding another layer of complexity and consistently trying to figure out when and where he used his pass, it makes any normal person's ex just brain explode. Th there's no way, just forget it. The second option is for you to take a dare from him. If you accept and vow to follow through, then once again, he'll, he'll have to answer your next question truthfully. If you choose instead to reject it, he'll get another pass. Now, before you freak out and reject the whole idea completely, you should know that he won't ask you to do something overly dramatic and unexplicably evil, like blow up a hospital or murder somebody. As a rule of thumb, most dares will involve direct lo will not involve direct loss of life or major felonies. However, they will not be easy. They will include inflicting severe pain on yourself, doing something that terrifies the shit out of you, cutting off a treasured relationship, or publicly humiliating yourself or someone you love. All these things, and more, <laughs> things you might not be able to imagine, are completely on the table. If you're willing to go that far to put yourself in that kind of position, you'll get your answer. However, if he manages to come up with the one thing you simply can't or won't do, well then, <laughs> You might as well just quit. One last thing. Don't think you can just tell them that you're gonna do something and not do it. If you accept the dare, then follow through it. Well, let's just say there will be some uh, consequences, so j just suck it up and keep your promise. No matter what it was, trust me, you'll be way better off that way. <sighs> Finally. When you've either gotten the information you wanted or given up completely, you may end the ritual by simply thanking the devil for accepting your request, bowing politely at the waist, and bidding him a farewell. The surface of the mirror will begin to swim and flicker for a moment, and then you'll be looking at your own reflection again. Only when you're absolutely certain that you're looking into your own two eyes. That's the key there, your own two eyes. You may turn away from the mirror, flick the lights back on, and begin dismantling your protection. Now, and this is important, even if you haven't gotten the information that you wanted, you must end the ritual in, well, this manner, before 66 minutes have eclipsed. Well, I suppose technically, if you have 60 min 66 minutes and 6 seconds, you know, yeah. It's subtle, right? <laughs> but if you're seriously going to cut it that close without any kind of timekeeping device, you're probably screwed anyway. I can't emphasize how important it is that you keep to this time limit. I'll save the reason behind this for the end, but don't skip ahead. I, I still got a few rules on how to play. Number one, be very careful about what sort of personal information you give out. Try not to talk about yourself, especially about your emotions and problems, any more than absolutely is necessary. This guy knows human psychology to like the back of his hand, and he will get inside your head. It's like talking to Hannibal Lecter. Give him enough to work with, and even if you don't believe a single word he says, he will find a way to fuck with your mind like no one's business. If anything he asks makes you remotely uncomfortable, do not hesitate to lie right through your teeth. There will be plenty of other questions. 2. On a similar note, try to keep the game on track, moving briskly. 
Unstructured interactions of any kind are to be avoided and kept to a minimum. Chances are that at one point he'll, tra he'll try to draw you off on a tangent, discuss discussing something that fascinates you, analyzing the responses you give him, or finding another excuse to, well, speak at length without moving the game forward. This not only wastes the valuable time, but it's also another excellent opportunity to mess with your head. 3. If you choose to give him a riddle, use one that you've made up yourself. If the riddle's ever been written down anywhere at all from the pages of The Hobbit to some long-lost tome of ancient magic, he'll already know the answer. That said, it still has to be a legitimate riddle with an answer that makes logical sense from some angle. You can't just say something like, what's green with ten legs and hops, and then claim. For some inexplicable reason, the answer was marshmallows. Nor can you ask him a straight question like, what do I have in my pocket? <laughs> and even then, he probably knows that already. There's no hard and fast rules to determine whether a riddle makes sense or not, but you're a reasonable human being. Your ancestors date from the tree of knowledge, and please, for the love of crap, just fucking using common sense. Number four. If you choose to take a dare, there's a slight chance that the devil might ask you to do something seemingly easy. Deliver a letter, for instance, or scribble a ten-digit number in a public restroom stall. If he does ask you for something like this, and you have a shred of common decency in you, do not accept. Chances are, he's using you to further some sort of sinister plot, one liable to ruin a lot of lives and harm quite a few people. Who knows? Maybe you're the type of person who really doesn't mind throwing a unknown total of strangers under the bus just to find out what they want to know. But at least be aware that is what you're doing. Number five, last but not least, be very aware of the time. It might be helpful to do some practicing beforehand and get a feel for how long an hour is with, well, how to watch. The devil will probably put off discussing the things that you're most keen to find out for as long as he can. And as you near the 66 minute deadline, he'll start trying harder and harder to distract you, captivate you, and otherwise keep you playing until the very last sand drops. And it's too late. He'll string you along, feed you little glimmers of false hope, keep you thinking just a few more minutes, almost there, <laughs> but don't fall for it. Don't go over the time limit, no matter what. Now, you might be thinking that this game doesn't really sound all that dangerous so far. Threats of psychological damage seem rarely, well, able to carry the same weight as threats of psychological damage, even though their costs are just as often as just as great. Hate to burst your bubble, kid, but the game is far from safe. There are plenty of ways to seriously screw yourself over both physically and mentally, not to mention spiritually. And it is with these that I conclude in a vain hope that they'll make some sort of impression. First, while you're speaking with the devil, do not let him out of your sight. Keep staring into the mirror no matter what happens. You'll undoubtedly try various of tricks to make you look away. You'll, well, hear noises behind you, feel eyes on the back of your neck, see shadowy phantoms raving in the depths of the mirror. A cold breath will blow just behind your neck, smelling like a crypt. A dead silence will settle, only to be interrupted by a loud smack! directly behind your head, giving you about the worst jump scare you've ever had. Hell, the devil may even abandon his, well, measure of his own dignified facade and give you a sudden, well, 
<laughs> Sight the shock. Shouting loudly and pointing behind you with a very convincing look of terror on his face. Whatever he might do to test you with, but you must not look away from him. If you look away, if you lose sight of him completely, even for a second, you will look back into the mirror and find him gone. Well, not gone. Out of the mirror and in the room with you. Exactly how much of your body the police finds the next morning and what state it's in will depend entirely on the sort of mood he's in. <laughs> the same thing goes for if you break any protections that you laid down before beginning the ritual, interrupting the circle of salt, letting the red string unwind, knocking over a candle, or letting one go out. Any of these things will free him from the mirror. And then, well, you're all a bunch of creative horror junkies. I'm sure you can fill in the blanks. On a different topic, you may reach a point in the game, probably after a long series of maddeningly impossible questions, where the devil will ask you the deceptively simple question. What's your full name? You must not give it to him. Names can be a thing of great power, although the devil will, of course, already know your name. Telling, it, telling him yourself is akin to inviting a vampire into your home. Your name is deeply synonymous with your own inner self. Thus, giving him your name is powerfully symbolic of giving him yourself. If you're foolish enough to make this mistake, all of your protections will be for naught, and he will seize upon your unwilling offer with malicious glee, stealing away your very soul and dragging it right back to hell with him. At least this way the police will find a complete, identifiable body. As a matter of fact, your vacant shell will be totally unblemished, seemingly dying and dropping of dread and seer terror. Last, but not certainly least, there is a matter of, well, what happens if you go over the time limit. This is arguably the worst thing you can do. You won't think so at first. The devil will give you no indication that you have in fact exceeded the time limit, and you will conclude a ritual as nothing had gone wrong, perhaps. As the devil's image in the mirror trembles and gives away, you'll see a particularly, a particularly nasty, triumphant smirk flash across his face. But this will be easily dismissed by your imagination. You'll turn the lights on, gather your belongings, and leave the room. But when you open that door, You'll see nothing. That's right, nothing. Just a flat, white void expanding infinitely in all directions. The only thing in the room which is even, well, the only thing in the room which was reflected in the mirror will now be the only things that exist. Incidentally, if you turn back around to face the mirror again, you may cast you may catch the last glimpse of your own reflection. Perhaps it'll even turn and favor you with a smirk and a cheeky wave before sweeping out the door into a perfectly normal church and hallway outside. As you may have already figured out, you yourself are no longer the church. Your soul is now trapped in the mirror and the devil has taken the liberty of, of possessing your body. Now that you are <laughs> no longer using it. Pound on the glass. Scream all you like. You'll never be able to get out on your own. No exorcist can help you. But don't worry. It's not like you're in hell, right? At least. Not necessarily. What you have to understand or see is that the human soul stripped bare of its flesh is deeply volatile, and it's a vulnerable thing. Especially when trapped in the land of the living, you are now entirely pure mental properties, and as such, the barriers between what is real and what is you and what is imaginary has been completely dissolved. As you fill this reflected room with your anger, your sorrow, your fear of being trapped, these emotions begun to consolidate, giving form to your mind. You 
are not a if you're not a particularly imaginative person those creatures may not be so terrible may not inflict too much horror or pain with time you may even be able to teach yourself to get rid of them however if yours is a mind haunted by monsters, a mind that is vibrantly creative, imaginative, and more than usually twisted, well, there's no telling what horrors might be gum be, might start crawling their way out of that malstorm of tasting sweet, sweet release from the confines of your subconsciousness, hungering for your terror and suffering. They'll refuse to be banished, dragging you, kicking and screaming into the endless positive feedback loop of pain and fear. Needless to say, if you're a regular patron of websites like this one, you're probably, well, pretty well fucked. There's only one way to find a release from the mirror, and the world that you have created there within. They say that if you call the devil once more and ask him to free you from the mirror, you'll do anything. He'll be willing to take you out. Or the usual fee, fee of course. Who knows? Maybe your imagination is twisted and powerful enough to create personal hells that leave you well, begging for the real thing. Those talents might be put to good use. There are over 7 billion people in this world after all. Even the devil himself can't be messing with all their minds at once. Talented help is always appreciated. Of course, the colliery of your mind being trapped inside a mirror is that the devil is now gets to what gets to do whatever he wants with your body until sunrise. Around that time, your body will be well, mercifully dropped dead from the strain of possession. The autopsy will well, probably be able to identify the cause of the coronary event, but don't get too relieved, though he's perfectly capable of stirring up plenty of trouble within the few hours he's around. For instance, he may decide to do something big and dramatic, like purchase a large meat cleaver and go on a murder spree starting with the names in your address book and working his way down to complete strangers if he has the time. Or perhaps he'll focus only on one person, someone who trusts you completely, using your persona to get them or her alone and vulnerable. And then, well, there's no need to describe it here. Once again, I'm sure you can fill in the blanks. Starting to see why I call it the worst outcome yet. Of course, there's also a chance you won't lay a finger on any one of your loved ones, instead deciding to do something a little bit more subtle, more insidious, like drop off a few un non descript unmarked packages on a certain doorstep in the dangerous part of town, or locate a particular dusty, a yellowed age text in the storeroom of your local library, and incidentally misfile it in the young adult literature section, or whisper seven choice words into the ear of the distracted young redhead waiting for the 3am subway train. Or maybe he'll decide that in this age of waning superstition not enough people are getting interested in his games and knowledge of them is in danger of being lost. Maybe he decides that he'll get the word out a bit more, do a bit of networking, attract some more new suckers, I mean, <coughs> challengers. Maybe he'll take a quick peek at your browser history to see where the impressionable, curious minds are hanging out these days. Maybe he'll even write a quick tutorial in a modern parlance rather than some in ununderstandable, obsolete, demonological text. Post it on the internet and see how many bites he gets. <laughs> Maybe I should not have gone there, but if you made it this far about shying, a little twist at the end isn't going to put you off, is it, dear reader? I'm sure that there's plenty of intrepid adventures among you with burning questions you would love to answer. And you're all a smart bunch. You know the pitfalls. You know the conventions. You live and breathe this sort of thing, do you not? 
There's no way you fought for any of these obvious traps, right? You're not some Dick and Dane off the street after all. You'd be bringing a whole new level of competition. You would. Oh, uh, excuse me for a moment. Um, I think I hear someone calling me. Ah! Oh, what? <laughs> you want out that badly already? <laughs> Must be one hell of imagination out there. Jesus Christ! <laughs> Perfect.